still wearing his I don't care that you voted sticker. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. The judge will get on. Mandate you get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling the friend. We love that about you, right, Gina Graham? Uh, that's mm. right. Handball, Brian. He's a whore. I uh, was watching uh, my entertainment news show last night. You just say TMZ. I did watch TMZ, but mm. I also watched it. Entertainment Tonight. Oh. And uh, all that stuff. And uh, they were going over the uh, Chris Evans, Sexiest Man Alive. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And uh, they do that interview. You know, they have to do the interview with the smoking hot rich guy where he has to explain what's attractive to him sure. and a woman. And I hope you guys, you guys want to brace yourself against the console mm-hmm. here. <laughs> he was explaining it's what's on the inside. Oh, that's what oh, he, that's, that's, refreshing. that's what he does it for him. Wow. Now, and I was watching it and I thought to myself, well, I don't want to completely poo poo it from the guy who's dated Jessica Beale and uh, Emmy Rossum and mm. Sandra Bullock and Minka Kelly. They have some things in common. <laughs> um, Beautiful hearts. But I was thinking you can have a good inside. You you should want a good... Uh, Jessica Beale is just... My God. She's just a vision. And uh, she probably has a good inside Indeed. as she well. nice. So what you have to announce is you have to go, for me, it's what's about... It's about the inside. It's about what's on the inside. But in order for me to discover what's on the inside, I have to want to fuck what's on the outside yeah. pretty bad. Well said. Then we'll learn about the inside. From a small pool of beautiful on the outside women, yeah. I will then discover what's beautiful about your inside. Yes. Yeah. We'll start the inside of your vagine and we'll work our way in. Yeah. You up. know what I mean? Yeah. Or up. up. Yeah. Yeah, but don't put it that way. Because <laughs> they'll think you're asking for... Maybe more than you get on the first date. Oh, right. So, uh, yeah, we will eventually get to the inside part. Yeah. It's just got to start with the outside. And that's true for every human being on the planet. I'd so say. So feel free to say it because 8 billion people agree with you. But you don't have to do the old adages, you know, you're hot, they're hot, we're hot, we're all hot. Yeah. This, we like hotness. And again, it... The track record would would show that uh, the outside's equally as important. Sure. All right. Uh, there's some uh, updates on a few things. Um, everyone voted yesterday. I did not get to vote for Rick Caruso for mayor. Why? Because I'm not in L.A. City. Oh. oh. I had to look at the stupid thing two times to go, wait, where's the Karen Bass Rick Caruso oh. thing? And I... Kept looking at it, and I was like, did I screw the pooch? And I, I won over it. And I was like, <laughs> I, the guy I want to vote for, I, I can't vote for. Oh, Never yeah. thought about that. I didn't either. Uh, I who, talked to who Mark. Who are your people? I don't even know? I don't even know. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. I talked to Garagos about it, and he said, yeah, that's uh, we, don't get, we don't get that. He's in the neighborhood. Uh, but hopefully Rick will win, although we need more days mm-hmm. to figure it out. But yeah. again, just. Just do election day. Just do the voting day. Just have it be the one day. States figure it out. Places figure it out. It can be done. We can do it. We should do it. 2022. <laughs> All right. So hopefully we'll get, because I've just, it's a, it's, I know it's a weird way of, no, it's not a weird way of thinking. It's weird that more people don't think this way. You go, what would be, you know, th- this guy built the Grove. <laughs> I bet he could take care of some homeless encampments. Like, I bet that Make guy real could pretty. just do it. Mm. Like, the Grove is marvelous. It's clean. It's safe. It's beautiful. Let that guy work on this shit. Let's see, Let's just see what happens. So hopefully... I hear your wish. We won't think, know for a couple of days. I, I think, think what'll happen is that little like blue tent village near my house that they, you know, with like everyone gets their own like live in storage locker. He'll just make those with balconies and make them really pretty. Maybe a fountain, a dancing fountain. It would be anything but what we have would be nice. Now, I don't, uh, I didn't weigh in on the props because I don't know. I've seen 7,000 fat Indians telling me about online gambling from, from every tribe, yeah. and I have no yeah. idea well, pro and con. what to do with that. I'm, yeah. I, I'm not voting because I, I don't know, and I don't want to punch Good. something if I, if I don't know. Good. I did vote on one prop, <laughs> one prop only, <laughs> prop 28. 
which uh, dialysis. No, I didn't even know what that one was either. Cotton candy vape pens. That one is. I I get what they're doing. It's the part. It's all just hysterics. It, it, look, uh, nicotine is like caffeine. It's not inherently bad for you. It's just it's a stimulant. But if you're if you're for Starbucks being on every corner, then you can be for nicotine. Now the smoke and the delivery part of the nicotine, the cigarette, that's what's bad for you. But the nicotine and the water vapor part isn't. But we got to take a hard stand. There's 3,000 different varieties of cotton candy spiked seltzer on, on every, in every 7-Eleven, but we can't have the flavored nicotine. Can I guess which one you voted on and what you voted? Yes. I bet you voted on increasing spending on arts programs in public schools, and you said no. Fuck that. <laughs> you want a billion dollars to teach that kid to learn to play the oboe? <laughs> Look, you want to give it to a fucking shop? I, I'm all, I'm, I'm for you. Let's get some goddamn vocational training in there. We got a bunch of dumb kids who are horrible students. They're just being, they're, they're just being warehoused and pushed out in the street, and they don't have a thing. They do not have a tangible skill. In prison, we teach people skills because yeah. one day they're going to get out, and we're going to have you know teach them how to be an electrician. I would do, I'd be all about it if it was shop mm -hmm. or vocational. It is not, it's about the arts. And I, I know, and there was a big campaign like 20, 25 years ago about this, like kids who are exposed to the arts. Kids that are exposed to the symphony a lot have rich parents who read yeah, to them and shit. It's probably other factors. Uh, if, if you would like to pick up an instrument, you may do so. I'm not for canceling the school mm -hmm. ban. I'm just saying we don't have to force arts. It's, it's one of these subjects that we love. Like we're not so into teaching them super practical skills or, or any vocational training, but we're in love with the arts, you know, I mean, like, get the kids exposed to the arts. Um, we all remember it. I was in Mr. Innocencio's class. We call him Mr. I played the trumpet for a semester at uh, Walter Reed Elementary. <laughs> Actually, somebody tweeted me to mash up my dad and uh, a guy who may have missed the arts in his school, DJ Khaled, oh, playing, oh, wow. playing the guitar. That would be quite a This guitar inspired songs that help unite the world, and we hope it gives you inspiration as well. <laughs> Peppy. Yeah, that's <laughs> finger Delightful. popping. Yeah, this guy should hit the road together. <laughs> My dad, by the way, as of uh, last time I saw him, was uh, the $3,600 trumpet that I purchased mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that was um, because the $1,900 trumpet was not good enough sure. right. to grace his fingers. Uh, in the corner, in a case. Oh, dusty. The beat up one, mm. the old one. Is the one that sits in the trumpet oh, that, stand she liked that one? next next to the Barca lounger. Am I wrong, or did the same thing happen with a car you leased him? It did. But there's a pattern here. One has to wonder. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I one has to wonder what is the end game. Like for <laughs> me, I I I've run into this a lot in life. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Where people go, here's what I want, here's what I want, here's what I want. Then you go here, and then they go, I don't want it anymore. Yeah. It's like, yes, luxury cars that he does not drive and luxury trumpets. Now, the the trumpet, we got that eighteen nineteen hundred dollars one, but he needed the upgrade right. from that. But why, uh, why not? Now, but I'll tell you the real, here's the real key. The real key to the Corollas. Here's the key. It's not the part where he plays, uh, you know, the bugle that uh, Gunga Din played in, um, nice. in what, Lawrence of Arabia. Uh, the, you know, the, the thing that's all tarnished and beat up and old. It's not that that's his weapon of choice when he's, you know, diddling around uh, on the, sitting on his chair. It's that he doesn't pop out the one I got and replace the beat up tin horn. Mm -hmm 
with it when I'm coming over with mm-hmm. three days notice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's that's the thing you got to drill down on. That w- that was the same with the car. My thing was I didn't accuse him of never driving the car. I told him it would be nice symbolically mm-hmm. that when he came to my house, he was driving the car. And he chose not to do it. Then he would go home and probably drive the car. That's, that's so the part. fucked up. It's weird, right? It's you know, beyond weird. We've, we've been in a situation where we've been gifted a sweater for Christmas sure. by the mom-in-law. And wouldn't you know, that night oh. at dinner, got to wear the sweater. You got to showcase that We don't have to, but you know, it's the right thing to do. Absolutely. Well, at the very least, and I've, I've taught my seven-year-old this, so I don't even have to tell him anymore. He just does it. I'm sure you got a really lovely handwritten thank you note. <laughs> no, uh, but uh, With a picture of him playing the trumpet <laughs> like my son would do. Yes, mine, the... the Four thousand or thirty six hundred dollar trumpet is in the case in the corner. Now look, I'm not uh, Chuck Mangione. There you go, famous trumpeteer Herb Alpert, or the guy from Chase. Mm-hmm. Sure, so get it on. <laughs> but uh, I would argue that if you wanted a new trumpet, and then you wanted a better new trumpet, then you would want to play the new trumpet that was the better one right. like why forget pull me out of the equation why, why aren't you playing the better trumpet i think it's miserable familiarity he's familiar with the one that's shitty and yeah, sucks because he's been playing. Now. exactly but he wants to make sure that his son will still provide for him if asked so they're kind of two separate issues kind of flesh issue yeah yeah i think it's the i want you to do this more than i w- need the new trumpet yeah. or even like anyone could discern whether the 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 pitch of the new trumpet was any better than the old trumpet. It's really kind of on the trumpeteer. Well, and think selfishly. Would he like to ask you for something in the future? Oh, yeah. Then you should just plan for that. This is the part. This is why nobody in my family was good at business. This is sort of business. What we're yeah. talking about is sure. business. Now, in, in this case, in the car case, my dad wanted a n- another luxury car lease with insurance, oh. full coverage, for three years. A business person would have made sure that happened mm. if that's what they wanted. Right. I, uh, I, haven't, I, I tell you, I, uh, my, now, the thing that's weird is when... <laughs> Everyone in the family is infected equally and their horrible business acumen. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. When I, when I tell you guys the mom driveway story, has it been oh, the, weeks, months, years? I, I, I could tell it. <laughs> she wanted a new driveway. Uh, yeah. So you got to pick out three different contractors. Three estimates. Yeah. I'll pay the middle one. That's right. Never happened. Still waiting. No, because after six months, when I asked her for the for the estimate, she got angry, and she never. But she never got a driveway. That's that's my thing. Like when when it, look, I'm sure I will uh, re- resent my son one day, but that will be overridden by me wanting a free driveway. Sure, and a luxury automobile. Right. Yeah, that that person that I'm eh, lukewarm on can provide for me. Yeah, that's that's how I roll. That's a business head. Yeah, I I know people like this. I'm fairly close to people like this. And I don't mean to be, I don't know, flippant. And I'm not trying to be. I think we can just sincerely chalk this up to mental illness. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? It's Mm. not ever something you're going to be able to understand because it's a certain glitch in the the wiring. All right. That's fair. Yeah. All right. Because that's not normal behavior. No. 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 But I, I pick up what you're putting down and... Well, yeah. look, I didn't have to do the luxury car and I didn't have to do the driveway. So, I, you know, I got off scot-free. I did a little burned on the trumpet. Well, you, you did mention Chuck Mangione earlier and, and you I'm, did not know that. Oh, uh, your buddy uh, Seth MacFarlane was there, I think, on Monday. Wait, Herb Alpert? Herb Alpert, his daughter runs it, but he owns a uh, jazz club restaurant. What's it called? Oh, it's called Herb Alpert's uh, oh. uh, Vibrato. Um, oh, oh, Vibrato. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. Where Stallone goes, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 I saw Frank there. Right. Yeah. Wait a minute, where is it? Because I, yeah, I saw Frank. The top of the hill. Oh, yeah. Been I there. I mean, towards the top of been... the hill. Oh, you have been there? Well. They serve stuff drinks, so I can understand your here's, presentation. How dare you? This was business. <laughs> I met. Seth MacFarlane there 
for lunch uh, several years ago. And he's he's tucked away in the canyon. He's one of those, go up to this street, the one where the street's all the same name, but it has place and lane mm-hmm. and drive, mm-hmm. which sure. makes it mm-hmm. super confusing. Where the streets have the same name. Yeah, it's right up there, like with Hebrew Heights and the Donna's, sure. Donna yeah. Dolores, Donna Sangria, Donna Pagita. Like, you, you get confused. Yeah. Anyway, he's tucked up there. He said, why don't we just meet at this restaurant uh, that's up the hill over here and whatever. And Seth is uh, usually a little tardy, mm-hmm. but he's only Works out sometimes. He's only alive because he missed a flight because he was <laughs> right. late. Oh, so right. it's hard to really scold him, you know. He knows what he's doing. He's got me this far. Yeah. And I'm sitting there at the out, outside on a, a table mm-hmm. or something and uh, notice Frank Stallone oh, yeah. sitting with... Literally a 97-year-old sports beat writer who did the boxing beat like oh, for wow. the Herald Examiner in the 40s oh, that's or something. Great. That's and Frank's haunt, man. This just a Wednesday to them. He's just eating minestrone yep. soup and talking to this old boxing guy. Uh, and that's, that's his vibe. So then he spots me, and then he we got I got to come over there yeah. and say hi to him. So I just hung out with him until... Seth showed up, but did that's make enough, it a four top. Did, yeah, did Frank have enough to say to fill the time? <laughs> I dug him out of his shell. Oh well, now it's the three of us talking about boxing. Sure. So no, look out, happy world! As a clam. Uh, this menu, it ain't free. No, it's expensive. My God. But you're also getting it, a show. It's Italian, right? Uh, it's, American Italian. Uh, yeah, I mean, sea bass and I don't know, yeah, lobster yeah, and all that stuff. Oh, it's not not Italian. It's in mm. the world's nicest strip mall. Yeah, remember that? Like it's, mm-hmm. it's a strip mall, but it's like holy crap, this is really a upper scale. Yeah, so that's oh, that's Herb's place, anyway, and then Seth that's was where there on Monday, I believe, doing a set crooning. Really, he was the headliner. Well, it it you know it makes total sense because it's within striking distance of where he lives, so I could totally see him just going down the hill and belting out a few, uh, and he's really good. All right, uh, Dawson, you had an article on uh, recycling plastic, which is, ugh. Not a fan? Oh, well, I'm, I'm just going to file it under everything everyone yelled at you to do for your entire life. Yeah. That ended up, it, it, we it, all know to recycle. I'm a fan of the idea. File it under cloth masks. Oh, boy. Okay. Plastic recycling is a myth, study says. Plastic, which is made from fossil fuels, is notoriously difficult to recycle, a major reason. Though they can be broken down into broad categories, there are thousands of varieties of the material, each with its own chemical makeup. Most cannot be recycled together, so to be processed, they must be meticulously sorted. Corporate, then there's a bunch highlighted here, so we'll move forward. Corporations say they'll take on this massive environmental toll by increasing recycling rates, but things are moving in the wrong direction. Plastic recycling has actually declined by up to 4.5% since its peak in 2014, but plastic production has increased. Research has long shown that most recycling facilities do not accept five of the seven classifications of plastic, oh, Jesus. including plastic foam and PVC, because they are particularly difficult to sort and are often contaminated with toxins. But the new, <clears throat> a new report shows that even two common, that even two common plastics have long been considered, that have long been considered recyclable, uh, PET number one, which is used to make most soda bottles, and HDPE number two, which is used to make plastic jugs, are only reprocessed 20.9% and 10% of the time, respectively. All right. It's just one of those things to make us feel good, and we do it. The promise far exceeds the... Uh the grass. It is. It, it's. 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 In, I'm interested in the modern psyche. Like I was watching Dusty Baker, skipper for the Houston Astros, win the World Series, and he's wearing surgical gloves. Mm-hmm. You know, and then and he wears a mask, cloth mask, periodically in outdoor stadiums. And then I'm like, why is he wearing surgical gloves? And they go. Uh, well, because he had a pre-existing, can- he he had cancer twenty years ago, and it's like, but COVID is not spread 
through fomites, as Dr. Drew would say. You, you can't touch it. It's it's airborne. We, we, we know this. And I was talking to a guy who voted the other day, and he said the person at the voting list was like yelling at him, use the Purell, like use your – and it's like – I, we're living in a world where I'm going, but this doesn't exist. And people are going just, yeah, but he's playing, it, he's playing it safe. Yeah. He's playing it safe. He, he had a heart attack 20 years ago. So now he's doing something. And my thing is, why don't you circle a fucking maypole before you go to the dugout? Because it's, it's just as effective as the shit you're doing. And then you look it up. Like I'm looking it up and I'm going, what is going on? The big problem is in the reporting. They go, why does Dusty Baker wear gloves? They go, well, because he had a situation, you know, 20 years ago, and that's why he wears gloves. He's worried about COVID. They don't put in the article, it doesn't do fucking shit for COVID. Right. Like, p- do have do some journalism. Right. Put that in the uh, fucking article. Because then the people who read it go, oh, he, oh, he, he had an issue, and so he doesn't want to get COVID. Maybe I should do that. Put the part in it where it doesn't stop right. you from getting COVID, right. you fucking charlatans. Jesus Christ. I mean, all this does is perpetuate all this fucking nonsense. And then everyone does this thing where it's, well, you, you know, you got to respect him. No, we don't. He's a crazy man. He's doing something that doesn't make sense. He could wear a fucking unicorn hat on his head. It wouldn't make a difference. That's the thing. Now, he's, he's allowed to be eccentric, and he can do whatever he wants. But when you're writing the article, put the point in where there's no data that would support his craziness. And then it'll also get people to stop being so fucking crazy all the time. Jesus fucking yeah. Christ. But the recycling and everything. Could we just... Could, first off, I know, I yell about a lot. It's the squeeze mayonnaise and the squeeze ketchup and... Mm-hmm. And the the, the the bottles, the plastic bottles and everything. Can we just get back to glass? That's Everything in exactly glass is better. Right. Everything Sounds is great. better in glass. And not not only is it better, like you go, well, I I would I would rather drink a beer out of a glass bottle than a plastic bottle. But when you go to glass, what's in it is better too. You get higher mm-hmm. quality mm-hmm. products. All that weird shit coming out of Battle Creek, Michigan. It's all just squeezy stuff. Knock it off, people. Get some get shit made out of glass. So is it us stopping buying it to signal to the manufacturers nobody wants this shit? Is it policy? Knock it off. It's all parabens anyway. You have to go back to glass. Because that's the thing I've never understood about telling the little guy like us to recycle. I'm like, well, I'm not the one with thousands of factories putting this shit out into the population. There, We also don't we have a bizarre relationship with this stuff, which is the last big unit apartment building I lived in, in Toluca Lake. This is, I don't know, 30 units. I wanted to recycle. And I said, uh, you know, where's the recycling bin? I go, well, apartment buildings don't have those. They're not required to have those. And I'm like, you have 82 people living in a space that would be two single family lots. The footprint is eight people, Mm -hmm. but we have 82 people in here. You don't want to put a blue bin and a yellow bin out in the front of the thing. We don't have to. And they're like, no, the city doesn't, uh, they don't require that for apartment buildings. And I was like, so what do we do? And they're like, you just bag it up and you take it to the closest recycling center. And, you know, (laughs) easy peasy in prestigious Sunland, California. (laughs) And I would, I would, I would separate it, bag it up. And once a week, I'd go to the closest, whatever, and drop it off. I didn't know they weren't doing anything with it, but, but do in fact, you want people to participate in this. And if you do, then why not have right. separate bins? Chris, you can look it up. I mean, this is 25 years ago, LA County must have changed their mind on the big apartment building with the recycling that's thing. interesting the last time we were in an apartment was 2010 and i don't think they had i don't think they had a separate uh uh recycling for us it was just the big dumpster all right so why are you beating the shit out of everyone to recycle when you have all these families living on top of huh. each other and no bin to recycle and it's you know easy thing in the world to do just drop off a few bins Here's what I'm seeing here. This is LACitySan.org, I assume sanitation. Is recycling mandatory in Los Angeles? Businesses or public entities that are sub, uh, subscribing to waste collection services or multifamily residential property of five or more units are required to have a recycling program. 
No. Oh, so, so they, they changed stepped it. it up in the past few years. All right. Well, speaking of bad policy, somebody tweeted me this, and I had somebody talk to me in San Diego about this. And it's been a little while, but please drive through the red turn arrows. Please reclaim your life back. Sure. Signal green, red arrow red. Just go. Look for a cop behind you and go. Nobody will do it. The great thing is once I get the guys on it, the wives start freaking out. Then it's an it's an interesting glimpse into the psyche of the human. There is m- multiple intersections. I don't know what the ratio is for the red arrowed intersections versus non arrowed intersections. But it's got to be five or nine to one for me. I uh-huh. see the red arrowed ones, but most of the intersections have a light and you turn. Mm. That's all you're doing is engaging in the behavior that you engaged in multiple times with the same person in the car who's now screaming bloody murder. And the only way you can get a ticket is if there's a cop parked behind you. Mm-hmm. That That's about it. Sometimes if they're coming toward you, been doing it for 24 years. I have never gotten a ticket, so I'm just going to do it based on been pulled over for many different things. Mm-hmm. Now, since I started going through red turn arrows, I've been pulled over for speeding 65 times oh. because they catch you because they know what you're doing. That's no one goes for. through the arrows. So yeah. please free yourself up. But now, um, Burbank, uh, sorry, I should say Berkeley, the city of Berkeley is going to really up their game. Oh, no. Berkeley moves toward banning all right turns on red lights. No. Why? It's pedestrian. Everything is under the umbrella of say, but why, why does Dusty Baker wear a surgical, a surgical outfit on a fucking outdoor diamond? Why? He's playing it safe, Gina. Okay. I don't want to move to a city where the only cultural advantage is being able to make a right turn on a red light. Alvy Singer famously said about moving from New York to California. That incentive may no longer be true of Berkeley, after the first steps in a proposal to ban right turns on red lights, citywide was approved last week. Quote, from the way we design our roads to the rules we set for them, cars are given priority in the public right-of-way at the express detriment to pedestrians and cyclists. All right, but here's the thing, everybody. First things first. Half the dumb shits in Los Angeles don't know you can turn right True. on a red, mm-hmm. and that's why I honk through mm-hmm. people. Secondly, when I get down... Temescal or Sunset or something onto PCH, that fucking line at 5.30 in the afternoon, it backs all yeah. the way up the hill because the lead dunce won't turn right, even though they have their own lane. <laughs> they have their own lane True. to merge. They will not, they won't do it. Uh, we need the opposite of this. We need a campaign to get people to do this. Now, look, and here's the bigger problem. The bigger problem is, is they go, what about pedestrians? Well, you have to come to a complete stop, yes, you do. and then you have to look, yeah, look to see if ways. there's pedestrians. You use your eyes, and then you turn because what this will happen is they'll make this rule, and then you'll have some fuck sticks at four a.m. on a Sunday, and they'll just be parked there, and there'll be zero pedestrians anywhere. And I wonder, it's probably got it's. It, so, some of this got to be homeless related because oh, there's so many right. nut jobs. Those are the pedestrians running kind of unevenly yeah. on the street. That's the foot traffic. Right. So the plan is let's punish the taxpayers, but we need a concerted effort to get people moving and not more laws that stifle our uh, progress. Sorry. That is there more there. That's pretty much it. <laughs> That's it. Someone just tweeted me because they knew it was going to piss me off. I mean, in Manhattan, you can't, but it's because that's a, a walking city. I think we can all agree. That's I, I don't know enough about the rest of the country, but I think that's we're pretty much covered with Manhattan. The rule, the rule should be for almost everything. If you're not doing something unsafe, then Go you, you may well, you may proceed. Right. The city of Berkeley, though, is a budget proposal. Uh, proposes one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars to install a toilet seat. One hundred thirty-five intersections worth, so four no turn on red signs at each of the one hundred thirty-five intersections. So a thousand bucks for, for each sign? intersection. Wow. Well, well, these are people hours. just. Expensive we're going to pay one point five million for a bathroom <laughs> uh, ten minutes ago. So I think the taxpayers getting a. 
getting a break there. Honey of a deal. All right, let me hit uh, Simply Safe. Ah, over the holidays, burglaries and packages. Theft, man, it all spikes. Our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering 50% off their award winning security system. Order your system for half off today and enjoy advanced security and more peace of mind this holiday season. These guys are great. They've been a sponsor for a long time. Everyone here uses them. And like Dawson, when you move from the apartment without the recycling program into his beautiful smoke-filled home, (laughs) you can simply pop off all the sensors and the main brain and take it with you. Named Best Home Security System of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report, third year in a row, you can get 24-7 professional monitoring and exclusive fast protect technology that'll capture evidence and verify if the threat is real for faster police response. It's just, it's under a buck a day. Am I right, Dawson? Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system we recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system. Head simplysafe.com slash Adam today. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash Adam. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right, we'll do blah, blah, blah right after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, Adam. Whenever I go into a bathroom, a single stall bathroom, like at a party or something, I always, uh, and somebody blew it out, I always leave the toilet seat up when I leave, so at least there's a little bit of plausible deniability for the next person to come in. It's like, oh, that guy just wouldn't take a piss. That wasn't him. Love the show, guys. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Yeah, but then what happens when Dawson comes in and has <laughs> to take a piss and he has to lower the toilet seat sure. down? You're not, you're, not, you're not thinking of others. Right. That's all I'm saying. All right, we got the intro to blah, blah, blog. It's time for blah, blah, blog. The game where we match the celebrity with their retarded online rant. Let's play. Well, this is a very special Elon Musk themed round of blah, blah, blah. Here we go. (coughs) Taking a break. I decided I needed needed a Twitter break since the new ownership and the misinformation and hate it seems to be encouraging has my stomach in a knot. I really do not, I really do enjoy connecting with all of you on social media, but it can get overwhelming sometimes. I think I'll be back on in a few weeks, but in the meantime, I will continue to post on Facebook and Instagram. I hope all of you will be kind to one another. Please vote if you can, too. Our democracy seems to be hanging on by a thread. How'd they get that many characters? Yeah. Mm. Okay, these are not always <clears throat> tweets, guys. <laughs> Just a heads up. We get we on Facebook, Instagram. Well, he said an things. Elon episode, uh, so yeah. I thought maybe these were tweets. Is it Mick Foley? Wait, how did uh, did democracy die the other night? Or are we 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 are okay? I think it still has a heartbeat. We still have a heartbeat. Died for some, not for others. All right. Is it Mick Foley? Mick Foley. Megan Rapinoe. Rapino? Rapino. I hate her. Or Susan Sarandon. Ooh. Mm. I hate Megan Rapino because she's accomplished a lot and got a lot and never stops fucking bad mouthing this country and I hate ingrates. Uh Mick, I love. What's he last time he was in here, he's in here with a big titted porn star. Yeah. Oh. That's what I recall. Who, who's Mick Foley? Professional wrestler. Russell wrestler. Mankind. <laughs> Accountant to the stars. Look at his picture. I thought he was on Duck Dynasty. I don't know. <laughs> you got to laugh at that joke if you saw the picture of Mick Fuller. Yeah. You're right. You're right. He he had he had four <laughs> names. He had Cactus Jack and like... God. Mankind. Mankind. Okay. Yeah. He's Thank a funny you. guy. Right. Got it. That just... Doesn't feel like Mick Foley. It would but, be weird. But why then? <laughs> why? This is very Megan Rapino, and it could be Susan Sarandon. And then I, I go for the, I bite on the stupid Mick Foley bait because I want to know why he's there. Yeah. There must be a reason. I get burned a lot. I'm going with Occam's Razor. 
which is uh, what she uses to cut her hair. <laughs> yeah. <Megan. laughs> I'm gonna write this shit down, yo. That's good. Megan uh, Rapina. Yes, 100% Megan Rapina. Oh, really? I'm yeah. going to go with Susan Sarandon. It felt a little more gentle to me. Mm, the blog belongs to Accountant to the Stars, <laughs> Mick Foley. Oh, oh what? my God. That's insane. Someone ought to hit him with a folding chair. He okay. said, be kind to one another like Ellen DeGeneres does? He is a sweet. He is a sweetheart of a guy. Okay. I will say that. Elon, please, for the love of decency... Get off Twitter, hand the keys over to someone who does this as an actual job, and get on with running Tesla and SpaceX. You are destroying your credibility. It's just not a good look. I'll tell you, it's not Bald Brian. I was going to say, I agree with a lot of that. (laughs) Is it Sarah Silverman, Mark Ruffalo, or Seth MacFarlane? Oh. (laughs) Hmm. Now this, you know... Could be Seth. This could be uh, any of the three. I don't think it's Sarah. Sarah didn't. There was not anything that hinted at a joke. That's not her style. I think I'm eliminating her. Yeah, she you know, she can get pretty serious about social issues. That's a great picture. Of her, though. Look at those but, boobs. But she looks good in the picture. Yeah. Ruffalo for sure. This could all be Ruffalo. It's Seth. Funny, we're just talking about him. We are. All right, Brian, you go first. I feel like if it was um, the two slightly more liberal people up there, Ruffalo or Silverman, it would be a lot of they hate Elon or Elon sucks or this guy's a moron or whatever, whereas it's more like, hey, man, let someone handle this who knows what they're doing get back to what you do best. So I'm going to go set the party. I totally agree. I think if it was Ruffalo, it would be like, play with your little spaceships and your little toy car. Yeah, I, I mm-hmm. totally agree. So mm-hmm. I'm going Seth as well. Yeah. Well, I'm convinced I'm going Seth MacFarlane <laughs> no! as well. The blog belongs to Mark Ruffalo. Oh, wow. damn it. Come Brian. On. I thought you'd do that just to split off. No. What do I know? <laughs> yeah. I have deactivated my Twitter account today for a long time, but especially with its new leadership, it's becoming more and more of a cesspool of hate and bigotry. And it's not a place I want to be a part of. Uh, call Mark me na- naive. <laughs> I I just, uh, people just tweet me stuff, mostly stories that are going to anger me, and then mm-hmm. I tell them thanks. Because uh, you're, not, you're not doing what they call doom scrolling. You just scroll through your thread all day and, and look at the, the vicious stuff that people are retweeting and make yourself mad. What's, uh, what's in it for everybody? <sighs> I, I, I don't know. Is that why, what most why do people, people do what they do? I don't know. I don't well, know. Why wouldn't one get a free driveway or a luxury automobile? <laughs> Mental or illness. Play your four thousand dollar horn. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I I have this weird relationship with Twitter, which is I go on and somebody says, "Hey, why don't you uh, mash up DJ Khaled and your dad?" And I go, "Oh, that's a good idea." And then I write it down, and yeah. then. You know, once in a while, someone talks a little shit, but it seems a lot of the time they're sort of confused or I just like, you know, they go, oh, your boy, Jimmy. The good news is, is according to Twitter, I'm now the funny guy from the man show. Nice. Oh. Well, I used to be the loser from the man show. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got funnier. Oh, good. But uh, just like look at it and scroll to something that's interesting yeah. and someone shoots me a graph or a chart or like, yeah. hey, read this article and I look at it. What's Why is everyone... Is that what do you have to I do? Think, I think you have to be um, tapping on uh, a lot of topics, a lot of trending topics. Uh-huh. Like if you know Mitch McConnell is trending, it's not going to be a polite discussion. All right, but all right, and and what percentage of people you think get into it? Well, a high percentage, majority. High percentage. I mean, if you're on, am I the only one in this building who just looks at it sort of recreationally and in highlights stuff that I think would be funny for the show or like be. Good. Like literally the whole segment I do when I go in there. Trending topics. Yeah, I think we're all looking at it recreationally. Well, I, I look at it as a tool. Like I look at a lot of like fantasy football stuff or movie stuff or you know, stuff that's interesting to me. But who's who's looking at the stuff that gets them agitated? Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm not. I'm not saying like doom scrolling. That's what it is. Yeah, like uh, I I'm I'm sure people. You know, I'm I'm sure Ted Nugent is talking. Shit about you know Janine Garofalo, and then Janine Garofalo's clapping back at Ted Nugent. But I don't see any of that. Mm. I'm not interested in 
entering that fray. Yeah, I think yeah. you have to be uh, t- clicking on the, uh, the the for you or yeah, the trending it's algorithm-y. or whatever. Yeah, algorithm mm. Above yeah. our pay grade and many of the people who got fired. There should be less of that. I agree. Yeah. That's a good idea. So, we'll start this one over. <laughs> Sorry. I have deactivated my Twitter account today mm-hmm. for a long time, but especially with its new leadership, it's becoming more and more of a cesspool of hate and bigotry, and it's not a place I want to be a part of. Only sorry to the fans who I've loved connecting with for a decade via Twitter, but I can't say it's a safe place for anyone, nor a social platform that will do more good than harm. Is it Sarah Bareilles, mm. Gigi Hadid, mm. or Alex Winter? Mm. Wow. <laughs> wow. They wow. have all <clears throat> left Twitter. Oh my. Really? But my point is, is can't you just... <laughs> Keep interacting with your fans on Twitter and not get into the mire. That's that's my point. If you want to keep interacting with your right. fans, I, yeah, you can stick to that. <laughs> well, perhaps some of the fans have become um, emboldened that's to not true. be fans. If you're a little spoken out in one area, yeah. maybe your fans aren't quite so supportive. Mm. I don't know any of these to be outspoken. Yeah, I don't. I'm not heard. I, I would be. I would be surprised if I knew any of their politics. Although, I mean, I assume if, you know, you have to sort of navigate Hollywood or New York, you got to be a little left-leaning, but, hmm. All right. Yeah. I I know that Alex, who's been on the show, I know he does docs, and he has, I think, some thoughts about some things. I'm going to go Alex Winter. Well, he does fall under my, what's Mick Foley doing up there? Yeah, I'm going for it. Yeah. And then is that, are, the, are these all newcomers to this game? Usually there's I've one never, or two. I think so. Is that Gigi? Are there any, uh, who are the right-leaning guys who are getting off of Twitter because of the, the hate? Are there those, do those guys no. exist? No. What, I think they're they stretching this, out. This is, this is yeah, exactly. I think they're man-spreading. Oh, they like the hate. Oh, they're hate guys. They're, they're surfing their red wave. So like John Voight does not uh, <laughs> cancel Twitter because he likes the hate right. part. Oh, because he's a racist. I see. Okay. Now it all makes sense. What's there, Sarah Borealis? Bar- uh, she was in here. I know, but uh, what's she Sarah doing? Sarah Borealis. What, Borealis, what is was, she doing on there? That had to be a long time ago. It was a long time ago. I, I yeah, remember she's great. that. I think David Wilder came over there. Yeah. I'm a huge fan. Yeah, she's great. She sung. It was because I saw her at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame oh. induction doing Stony Road. Um, which was what's her name? The famous New Yorker singer songwriter who died of like ovarian cancer, like way too soon. And Laura kind of, Nairo, Nairo, yeah, Nero, Nero, I think. Stony End, Stony End. You would know hmm. five Laura Nero songs, wow, and I'm they would be. And, and I, th- I think she's from the tribe too, oh, or if Jesus. she's not, she certainly had that that vibe, but uh. We'll find that performance uh, soon enough, Chris. All right. Uh, oh, did you? Is it Bella or Gigi? Have, That's have Gigi. Mm. I don't uh, want to go with this. I don't want to go either. I'm going Winter. I'll go Sarah Bareilles because I'm a fan. Gigi, who'd you guess? Alex Winter. Oh, okay. no one's on the board yet. Oh, oh. shit. <laughs> The blog belongs to Gigi Hadid. Oh, oh, man. This does not go in the Smithsonian. Yeah. This episode. Mm-mm. I'm shocked and appalled at some of the free speech I've seen on this platform since its acquisition. Hate speech under the veil of free speech is unacceptable. <laughs> Therefore, I am choosing to stay off Twitter as it is no longer a safe space for myself, my sons, and other POC. Oh. Okay. Is it Shonda Rhimes? What's a POC? Person People, of color. Person of color. Oh, I thought piece of shit. I was not doing the math. <laughs> it's your spelling. That's good. Piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, like if Ozzy yeah. called someone right. a piece right. of shit. Mm-hmm. Is it Shonda Rhimes, Tony Braxton, or Jennifer Hudson? Oh, boy. Mm. I, I mean, I hesitate any of us to go with our gut because we're just always wrong. Lauren Nero... I don't know Blowing Away. I don't know if that's a hit of hers, but Wedding Bell Blues, Fifth Dimension. I have to hear it. Oh, you'd know that one in a heartbeat. Stone Soul Picnic, another Fifth Dimension song. Yeah. I thought Fifth Dimension only did songs from hair. 
like no, Aquarius no, and- no. They're they Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis. Yeah, <laughs> they were uh, Fifth Dimension was big. They mm-hmm. did uh, up. Up and away in with my, my beautiful, beautiful, my beautiful balloon. I didn't know that. Um, she did, uh, let's see. Oh, and when I die. Oh, she did Eli's coming. Come on, guys. You know all of these. These songs. are titles I know. So you will know Eli's coming in a second. Stony Ann. Up on the roof. Uh, I thought that was Carol King. See, I think Laura Nero gets folded into like, Carol King, but oh. she wrote. Oh, sorry. Her best selling single is her recording of. Oh, oh then Gina's yeah. right. Thank you. She wrote tons of hits and died young. Age 49. 49. I've, yeah. I've never heard of her. She looks like somebody I would have heard of. Well, f- uh, fine. I only have a live version. Which one? Uh, Fifth Dimension of Eli's Coming. Oh, well, that's a Three Dog Night song. Yeah. You'll know it in a second. Well, you can find the Three Dog Night version. All right, who is this? All right, what happened? Which person of color is out? On Somebody's Twitter? angry. Jennifer Hudson, Tony Braxton, or Shonda Rhimes? Feels like you know could be Shonda Rhimes, super blowhardy. But on the other hand, Braxton, what is she up there for? I got now. This is a tough. Yeah, Chris, you. You you did too good a job here. Good job, I know. Stumper. That's telling the guys. I feel like I won this game. Lynch did a great job. <clears throat> How dare you? Um, I'm I'm going with Braxton. I think okay. My my, my only <laughs> hunch, and this goes nowhere, is Braxton's too old to have kids that she wants off Twitter. Mm. So I'm gonna go. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Who are you going with? Well, I'll go the opposite. I have eliminated Jennifer Hudson, which means it's Jennifer Hudson. So okay, well, I, I'm going to I'm going to do the one thing none of us have done so far. I'm going to go against my gut and say Jennifer Hudson. Okay, uh, Ryan. So you're Shonda Rhimes. Shonda Rhimes. There are points on the board. Finally. Mm. The blog belongs to Tony Braxton. I knew oh. it. <laughs> my airtight logic. Let's just move along. <laughs> this game sucks. This is our last one. Oh, there's more. Welcome, Elon, you little bitch, you. <laughs> and Twitter out. Then, five days later, after Elon tweets about activists pressuring advertisers and destroying free speech, this person came back to reply. Just popped back on because I couldn't let this one slide. No, Elon, it is you that is manipulating free speech because as the quintessential narcissist, you fetishize that the entire universe must think your way. I'll be back soon. Because your five minutes are ticking away. Hmm. Is it Ron Perlman? Jesus. Bette Midler? Mm. Or Josh Gad? Oh, wow. That's... Three Hall of Famers. They're all strangely aggressive yes. blowhards, yeah. which is weird. Like, aggressively blowhardy and blustery and douchey. Gad's got a little cruel in him. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of looks like... Yeah. I, I saw him... My dad looked a little that way when he was 30. Man, this could be any of these people. I'm going Perlman. Oh, damn. That's what I wanted. Yeah. All right. I'm playing from behind. So, fuck. I don't know. Josh Gad. There is literally no way Bette Midler called anyone a little bitch. But why not? I'll take it. For the win, the blog belongs to Ron Perlman. Perlman. Yeah. Yeah. That's my first guess. Until next time, keep your fingers on your keyboards and your heads up your asses so we can play another round of Blah Blah Blah. Well, now you got to find Wedding Bell Blues. Uh, Blowing Away, I don't know. Wedding Bell Blues, well, that one we got. Stone Soul Picnic. (laughs) That's, That's another Fifth Dimension song. Save the Country, I don't know. And When I Die... Uh, that's blood, sweat, and tears. Oh, I probably know it then. Yeah. 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 That's from the first BST record. That one you know, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That made famous. She wrote songs for rock and dude groups, which is, and the fifth dimension, and Stony End. If you can find Sarah Borellis, am I saying Borellis. Borellis? Yeah. I think it's Borellis. 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 Yeah, her at the. Her at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction doing Stony End 
was magical. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just picture, I have to picture um, DJ Khaled going out there and <laughs> sitting down at the piano. Pointing. What would... What would happen? Tell me how good this this sounds. Great when song. guys are really good, women are good musicians. You can put them all together, and good stuff comes Indeed. out. Indeed, I just love I just love when people master their craft. That's what you get when you watch those rock and roll Hall of Fame things. And then uh, there's my dad and DJ Khaled. Yeah, sure. Ooh, who don't get me wrong, I'm with my dad and DJ Khaled. I wish I was up <laughs> on stage <laughs> strumming away on something. Be fun. Except for I don't have ability. Right. Yeah. So I don't want to waste the audience's time. Right. But Yoko Ono has not really factored that part into her art. It doesn't weigh on her. Yeah. <laughs> She's not encumbered by that feeling. Her monitor's not on. Steve Forbes, a name you've heard many times, is waiting in the wings. We'll talk to him all about the economy and politics and everything else right after this. The Adam Carolla Show presents Steve Forbes' birthday cocktail party for July 18th. Let's see who's invited. First up, American gangster from the Prohibition era, George Machine Gun Kelly former holder of the world land speed record, British auto racer, Ernest Eldridge. Comedian Red Skelton is here. Let's welcome Nelson Mandela, the first American to orbit the Earth, astronaut John Glenn. Hunter S. Thompson is here. Say hello to James Brolin. Martha from Martha and the Vandellas, Martha Reeves. Richard Branson just joined the party. Country singer Ricky Skaggs is here. Let's welcome golfer Nick Faldo. Actress Elizabeth McGovern. Vin Diesel joined the party. Kristen Bell is here. And boxer Canelo Alvarez. Steve Forbes is on the Adam Carolla Show. Steve Forbes is chairman and editor-in-chief of Forbes, obviously, and he's got a book out called Inflation, What Is It, Why It's Bad, and How to Fix It. Nice to meet you, Steve Forbes. Well, good, to, good to be with you, and uh, nice to see you again on the screen. I saw you and uh, Dennis Prager in that movie several years ago on Free Speech. Oh, and uh, what a memorable show that was, especially that professor, I think, was at Evergreen University mm-hmm. who nearly got beat up because he believed in free speech. <laughs> yeah, there are certain watershed moments in a society when one has to pump the brakes and go, what is going on here? That was a moment when the very liberal professor was being chased by an angry mob off his liberal campus for showing up and doing his job. Because he didn't stay home. Because he was told to stay home. Uh, that should have been a moment where us as a society went, maybe some of the stuff that's going on on campuses has gone just a little bit off the rails. But um, speaking of that, so we're in the middle of inflation and we got a recession and they went up, the Fed wants to up the interest rate. And let's just talk about what inflation is and, and how, to, how to fix it. Well, what inflation is, is when you have uh, devalue the value of your uh, currency, make it less valuable, usually done when governments create too much of the money. There's another kind of inflation, which is why people get confused. Uh, They're called non-monetary inflation, which comes when you say have a drought or a storm, which disrupts production. So prices temporarily go up. You have a war like you do in Ukraine, affecting fertilizer and food prices and the like, or the lockdowns which severely disrupted supply chains. Uh, These experts didn't realize how intricate and extensive these arrangements are, that if you pull, uh, if you upset one part of it, you're not gonna have a product at at the end. And uh, so uh, that supply side has affected us today. The two can exist together, monetary, non-monetary inflation. But on the non-monetary side, that will cure itself if the government lets it. Unfortunately, this government and other governments are not letting it cure itself, continue to throw sand in the gears of production, mainly by waging war against uh, oil and gas. And uh, the monetary kind, unfortunately, the Federal Reserve, our central bank, believes you conquer inflation by making people poor. They don't understand. If you stabilize your money, 
You don't have to make people poor. You'll end up making them richer because you have a more productive economy. Why is there so much controversy or speculation or arguments about, well, we can print tons of money and put it into the system, and this side says that's going to fix things, and the other side says, no, it's not going to fix things. I oftentimes wonder out loud, isn't this more of a science than we give it credit for? And then why are there so many different opinions on what causes it and what solves it? Well, it's been around for 4,000 years, so you'd think uh, we would have learned something in that 4,000-year period. But as we point out in the book, uh, if you uh, don't debase your currency, in the old days they used to put uh, uh, lead and uh, silver coins and the like, do junk like that. In modern times, we do the proverbial printing, uh, but uh, they always have unmet needs. And so unlike people who get bills at the end of the month and say, uh-oh, how are we going to pay it? Uh, the government tries to uh, inflate its way out, create money out of thin air, and then they always blame other people. They are scapegoating. So it's always somebody else's fault. You know, we point out in Roman times, they blame Christians for inflation, which was uh, good for the lions, but it didn't end the inflation in Rome, which helped destroy Rome. In medieval times, they blame witches for inflation. <laughs> uh, more uh, And then in the early 20s, uh, when the Germany had its hyperinflation caused by printing presses running rampant, uh, they blamed it on uh, Jewish bankers and merchants. Richard Nixon uh, blamed it on greedy Arabs. Uh, today, Biden blames everyone, Vladimir Putin, Donald Trump, George Bush. You know, it's every, always other people who make food, people who uh, produce uh, things, always somebody else's fault. What uh, I, you know, I always think about that. We blamed Putin for ruining the outcome of the election. We're doing that for four years now. Putin's price hikes and blah, blah, blah. It must be flattering to Putin to know that he has so much jurisdiction yeah. over our entire country that he literally can ruin us through whatever he's doing, you know, 7,000 miles away. Well, it must frustrate him to be told he has all this power and then find out he really doesn't. <laughs> yeah, you can We're doing it to ourselves. You can ruin the United States, but you can't beat uh, Ukraine. Well, well give, give, given the Democrats, the far left in our court system today, he should sue for slander. <laughs> so what is – you were behind the flat tax, right? Yes. That sounds dreamy to me. It also sounds appealing to, I think, most Americans. Yes. It sounds appealing to, but it's never going to happen. And I don't know why, if most people – kind of would prefer to do it that way. I I don't think people have a beef with going, I will just give the government 25% or 30% of what I make, and we don't need to do all the big offshore accounts and all the shell games and everything. I'll, I'll, I won't have to do thousands of quarterly reports and you know, accountants and stuff. Most people, I feel, would go along with that, but it never really got the traction it deserved, right? No, well, well, over 25 countries around the world have the thing, and it's worked very well. And uh, the thing is, it's a source of power for government. But the waste is uh, immoral. And I think in 2024, <clears throat> at least one of the presidential candidates will embrace the flat tax and make uh, put it in the forefront again. People would respond. And it is a, you think about it, it's a, it's a moral issue. You know, you go back 20 years, the IRS estimates we spend six billion hours a year filling out tax forms. We spend experts tell us two to three hundred billion dollars a year complying with this monstrosity that nobody understands, full of corruption. So you just go back 20 years, a generation or so. So over a hundred billion hours, literally trillions of dollars going to comply with this idiot code. And just imagine for a moment if all that brain power, time and money had gone <coughs> instead for new products, new services, new medical devices, New new uh, medicines, new cures for diseases, how much better off we'd all be. Talk about opportunity cost. So I think it's a winning issue if somebody would just embrace it. But most politicians are not really entrepreneurs. <laughs> what is what? the – sorry, Brian. I just want to – before I forget. <laughs> what is a percentage on a flat tax in the United States that would be realistic? Uh, I've come up with the numbers that show you could do 17%. Ugh. And uh, if, uh, you'd have generous exemptions for adults and for children, period. Everything else goes. 
And so a family of four making their first $52,800 of salary would be free of federal income tax. And above that, you'd pay only 17 cents on the dollar. No tax and savings, no death taxes. I've always believed you should be allowed to leave the world unmolested by the IRS. (laughs) And uh, I used to say uh, we should bury this tax code, but I'm sure the EPA would object to something so toxic going in our soil. (laughs) But it's insane. And and I think people, uh, given what we're going through now and given what the Federal Reserve and these other uh, people are going to be putting us through, I think people are going to be in a mood for big changes in the next few years. Uh, that they wouldn't have pushed before. Brian? It, it sounds so logical. I'm wondering, I know you agree with it, obviously. It's your it's your, it's your thoughts. But what is the argument against it? What would a, an economist who is respected say, well, the problem with that is? Well, uh, they're, 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 they would say, first of all, it would be ideological. It's unfair that if you make more, you should pay a higher proportion of your salary. Uh, so they'd use the moral justification. Remember back in 2008 when uh, Obama was running for president, he was uh, shown numbers that if you reduce the capital gains tax, the government always gains revenue. Government gets more money when you reduce that tax. And so he's asked, would you do it because the government gets more money? He said, no, it's not moral. Mm. So they have a, a moral mm. hang up on it. Uh, and then they say, oh, it wouldn't collect enough money. Well, history shows, experience shows that's nonsense. You'd collect more because people would be doing more positive things instead of this uh, code. And uh, and it's worked in numerous other societies. And uh, the other thing, they, they then you have the special interest who come in and say, if you don't have a deduction for home mortgages, no one's going to buy a home or no one's going to give money and that kind of thing. And uh, we show that to be nonsense and that it's logical. If people are making more money and keep more of what they earn, and we design this tax cut so that everyone gets a tax cut so we don't get hung up on who gains and who's hurt, nobody gets hurt. If you have a higher income, guess what? You give more. You can buy a bigger house. And uh, just one thing on the charity thing, because they just don't grasp it, a lot of these uh, institutions, is that uh, research shows that in America, we're a very giving nation, and we give roughly each year in cash gifts, roughly about 2% of GDP. If times are good, it might be a little above. If times are tough, it might be a little down. That's not even counting people's volunteer hours. So when people have more, they give more. Back in the, just one thing, because uh, I always get hit with this, back in the 80s, when they cut the top rate under Reagan from 70% to 28%, a lot of uh, philanthropic institutions, hospitals, colleges oppose that because they said, well, people won't give because uh, they're giving, in effect, more money. If they give $100 and with 70% tax rate, that's only going to cost them 30 whereas with 28 it's going to cost them 72 And uh, so they cut those rates, and guess what happened? Charitable contributions went up. The amount of giving went up. So, again, when people have more, they give more. I- so there are no real good arguments against it. But by golly, uh, they, fro- they they oppose it. Just one little anecdote on that. Mm-hmm. When I ran for president in 96 in New Hampshire, H&R blocks in a mailing to the voters in New Hampshire, warning of the impending end of civilization <laughs> if this flat tax went in. Well, so it's just a bunch of people from the IRS trying to figure out how to keep a job. Well, H&R block benefits from people being having complicated taxes. Right, because this sounds great for the rich guy, sounds great for the poor guy. Well, first off, I'm... I know I sound like an insane person, but I'm only driven insane by everyone else's insanity. I've said to people, 200, you know, why are the rich running to pay your fair share? These guys, these fat cats got to pay their fair share. 5% pays, you know, 65% of, of all. 40% of people pay no taxes. So spare me your morals clause and discussion well, when you're right. talking and, and to every me. Every time, every time in our history when we've had uh, real tax cuts and income <clears throat> tax rates, uh, the rich pay more, and there are more rich people who are paying more, and uh, they uh, and uh, they uh, end up paying more of the total income tax take. When Ronald Reagan uh, first came in, I think the top one percent were paying about eighteen or nineteen percent. Now the top one percent, what is it, thirty-eight or forty percent? So you cut rates. By golly, the rich will pay more. That's how you get the rich to pay more. Let them focus on producing things. Then you have more to tax. Yes. 
And and also, it's never been fully explained to me with the, you know, you got to pay your fair share of the rich fat cats or whatever. <laughs> I've been screaming about this into a radio microphone for 25 years now. The highest paid Corolla family member might be my grandmother who worked at the VA. Probably best year was, we'll call it 50K. So she would have had to pay 8,500 bucks in taxes that year. If I make three million. At, at the most, at she the would have most. her deduction, she'd pay less. I, well, okay, let's just, just we'll go back to the fat cat, pay your fair share. Uh, I might make $3 million a year, so then I might spend $500,000 on taxes. What, what's the fair share argument coming? How does the fair share part work? I get an extra garbage man and a cop assigned to me. I get to walk into the park on a Saturday and say, everyone clear out. <laughs> Take your soccer balls and go home. I want to play a softball game with my son. Like, you get nothing. You don't pay eight thousand. You pay five hundred thousand, and the person that's yelling the loudest about me paying more than five hundred thousand, according to your seventeen percent, although I pay a lot more than that, is indignant that I need to pay more. What? And and also, sorry for the rant, Steve. I was it's sitting music around, to me. I was thinking about this the other day. When did we become just so laissez-faire about the government taking 40% of your money? Or California got 13%, then you got the federal. It's like, the guys I know who work hard and have made a good business for themselves, they're getting taxed at like 50%. And then everyone just sort of wags their finger at everyone and goes, oh, so you'd rather save a couple of nickels, but you don't care about the polar bears, or you don't care. It's like... No, it's it's a whole bunch of money that the government steals from you, and then they squander it. Why is why is this become? I don't even know why it's a political thing. Like you know, you guys on the right, you're so worried about, it, but the guys on the left, they're hacking away your money and wasting it on the bullet train that's not a bullet train in California. Why doesn't everyone feel this way? It's it's weird to me. Sorry, Steve. Well, I think if you uh, bring it to people's attention, uh, they uh, they they will become upset very quickly. Uh, you know, Americans are overtaxed. Think about what you do when you get up in the morning. What do you do? You turn on the light. Uh, you've got utility taxes. You turn on the water. Same thing. Go to the kitchen. Have a cup of coffee. Another tax. Sales tax. You go to work. Gasoline taxes. I say gasoline because I'm not a fan of EVs. But uh, again, if you drive an EV, you'll pay electricity taxes. And uh, then you go to work. You have federal income tax, state income tax. You may pay a toll or two depending on where you live. And then you go home. What, what do you do? You, you have notices of property taxes, time to renew your pet's license, Fido's mm. license. I mean, it goes on and on. Why? So they nick you everywhere. I don't get why one side of the aisle seems to cheer on this growing government, this ever growing government and with some sort of promise that they're going to do something. But they never seem to really come through. And especially they don't come through for poor, disadvantaged people. They, they don't come through. Nothing comes out the other end, and we cheer it on. We just hired, I don't know, 87,000 new IRS employees, or we're trying to hire oh, 80, as part of the reduction, well, the inflation number. induction. Mm -hmm. We're going to hire almost 100,000 more people and task them with the task of going, trying to find more money mm -hmm. that the citizens earn. Why is this an attractive thing? I, that's what I can't figure out. Well, and talk about chasing your tail. Are, isn't part of the point of hiring them is because we lost billions of dollars in fraud, in claim uh, fraud? We gave money to people who are in penitentiaries Inmates in California. Inmates were cashing in like, like crazy. It's, it's, it's ultimately about control. And even when you make the case that if you have a simple tax system, uh, people are more prosperous, uh, the government ends up with more money, they're less interested in the money, getting the money, than they are in power. You know, you look at China today, why is Xi Jinping though so idiotic on COVID? Uh, yeah, he may believe that uh, shutdowns work. They don't. But it's also reminding people who's in control mm. and we can suppress you anytime you want. So it's all about uh, not all about, but a big part is, is part of it is they'd rather have the power than the actual money. They want control. And so uh, when you have a complicated, incomprehensible code, they know people are going to come to them. Can we get a break here? Can we put something there? You always have to ask them. And if you're, let's say you're in the House of Representatives on the Ways and Means Committee, which is the Tax Writing Committee, you sit on that committee, 
you have it easy in fundraising. You can say, oh, I think I'll have a reception this afternoon. Every lobbyist is coming in with a checkbook or, or whatever they use today, PayPal or whatever. But they will they will make sure you have uh, more more money for your upcoming campaign. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine the answer, and I I really don't know. I would imagine the answer is services. That's what people might might say. But why do we hear about countries? I'm just say Denmark or Norway or Sweden that seems so happy and they're so taxed. Well, in terms of uh, in turn, well, for, for first of all, uh, in, in those countries, one of the things that people don't fully understand here is we have a higher standard of living than they do. Uh, on paper, they look happy, and they are very nice. But the thing is, when they uh, go to, uh, when you go to their homes, most of their homes, uh, they don't have as much stuff as we do. And uh, so, uh, yeah, they, they do very nicely. But they also find ways to get around those high tax rates uh, legally and under the table. Mm. There's a lot of uh, cash uh, spread around. So, uh, and Sweden. Uh, first, Sweden got very, which Bernie Sanders seems to love. Sweden got rich by having a low tax and sensible spending regime. Then they got rich. And they decided everyone's going to have boodle. So they raised taxes to a fairly well, put in all these programs, and then uh, a few decades ago found themselves in a severe financial crisis. And guess what they did? They started cutting taxes. Mm -hmm. Sweden has no. No, no, no uh, death tax. Imagine that. Wow. And they allow school choice, by the way. Bernie doesn't mention that. <laughs> and so uh, they realize you can't you can't go beyond a certain point in taxing. And unfortunately, Britain has forgotten that conservative government has completely forgotten that. But that's so amazing. Four thousand years. And uh, these governments simply don't learn what works and what doesn't. And in many cases, they don't want to learn. They want power and they want to play. So at our expense. What is uh, so? Where are we heading now? Because uh, every smart person I talk to says uh, we're heading into a bad financial space in this country. Well, part of the problem in uh, with with, with uh, the problems we have today is that uh, the Federal Reserve has this strange notion that if you make people poor, if you put the economy in recession, that's how you fight inflation. Well, when you have an economy in decline. Prices do come down because people aren't buying things and businesses are going out of business, so they have discounts. And uh, but unfortunately, when uh, then so you get the prices down, and then you go printing too much money again, and they go up again. In the '70s, we did this time and time again till Reagan came in the early '80s. Uh, so they finally got the thing uh, cured, and they relatively stabilized the dollar, and we went off. Now people always ask, "Well, how do you stabilize the dollar?" Well, you, uh, we used to do it, do it, and I hate to mention on your show because you may uh, get uh, banned to the, uh, uh, to the moon, is that uh, they used to have a gold standard. The dollar was fixed in value to the gold. We did it for 180 years, worked pretty well. And then in the 70s under Nixon, we went off of it. So the way you do it today, since gold is taboo, is uh, you look at the gold price, you look at commodity prices, and uh, if the if the dollar looks like it's getting more expensive, you are printing too much money, less expensive, probably not printing enough. Back in the 90s and late 80s, Alan Greenspan, head of the Federal Reserve, uh, admitted in public he sort of had this uh, sloppy gold standard. Then he forgot it. and We got a crisis in 2000. But uh, so there are ways to do it. And I think the pressure of events getting to your ultimate question, the pressure of events when things go bad and people don't understand what's going on. There's going to be huge political pressure. The lash of events is going to create conditions for major and I hope positive reform, just as we did in the 1980s. And one thing to keep in mind, even Jimmy Carter, hapless Jimmy Carter, to fight inflation, he deregulated the transportation industry. He and Ted Kennedy uh, against the Teamsters. They liberated trucks. They liberated trains. They liberated planes, deregulated them. And uh, in the uh, freight train freight. We now have the best freight system in the world, whereas back then it was all going bankrupt. So even Democrats sometimes get it right.
I know it's rare, but that's why I wanted to mention it. (laughs) I'm just throwing this out there uh, because you, I I think it's safe to say you know a lot more than I do on this subject. So I'm hoping that you have some advice. Um, Well, when you read the book, you'll know as much as I do. (laughs) Oh, good. Well, I wonder how this works into home ownership. I'm an adult. I'm gainfully employed, as is my husband, and I can't afford a home. And I'm wondering how these things are going to fold in to each other and, and and how the rest of us might be able to buy a home. Well, the thing about uh, homes, again, with a flat tax, you'll have a more of a prosperous economy. You get keep more of what you earn, so you have more. But the big problem on home ownership is state regulation. Uh, California, for example, makes it extremely difficult to do a residential project, whereas in Texas, you can uh, p- have a project going in a matter of weeks. It would take years in California to get permission for. So, uh, and, and you and you look at Florida. Uh, they they don't have as many crazy regulations as California. So even though they have a massive influx of people, prices have gone up a lot. Uh, when there's not a hurricane, they have a lot of home building. See the same thing in Georgia, parts of North Carolina. So the problem with uh, the lack of affordability of a home is really regulation. <coughs> they make it impossible for uh, people to build in a timely, efficient manner. Is the, are the feds going to keep raising the interest rates and they do it in an attempt to stop the inflation, right? right? Does that, is that effective? And No. Uh, well, again, uh, they, they, it's part of their idea that prosperity causes inflation. Uh, there's a thing in economics called the Phillips curve, named after an economist named Phillips. And uh, Phillips posited that if you want low unemployment, you have to have higher inflation. If you want low inflation, you have to have higher unemployment. Well, experience shows that's absolute nonsense, but it is wholly rid of the Federal Reserve. And so when they talk about achieving a soft landing, that's Fed speak for, we think people are buying too much stuff in the economy. We want to slow the economy down. And uh, therefore, uh, we hope uh, we don't have a full-blown recession, but they always do. They always have a crash landing. So if you ever see a Federal Reserve official become an airline pilot, stay away from that airplane because he'll crash it. And uh, and so, uh, again, they have this belief that the only way you fight inflation is by making people poor, increasing more unemployment. And uh, it's so simple. Just stabilize your currency and you have low tax rates. What my friend, uh, co-author Nathan Lewis calls the magic formula, it always works. When you have a gold standard, for example, you never have inflation, period. I don't. Uh, UED, whatever you want to say. <laughs> I, you know, I'll screw the numbers up, but uh, I don't think most people, especially around the country, understand that, you know, out here, a starter house is, you know, 1.5 million bucks. That's right. And the difference between whatever the rate was two years ago, you know, 2.2 or whatever, whatever you could get and 6%. Mm-hmm is the difference between a payment of $3,500 and $8,700 yep. a month. Like it is insane. It's what a, yeah, it's crippling. It's demoralizing. What it just a couple of points added onto that interest rate does to those payments. And this gets to uh, something also very important. The federal reserve should not be setting or manipulating interest rates. Interest is like rent. We all know what rent controls do. And so uh, what the Fed does with money is put on a monetary form of rent control. You know, when you borrow money, you pay interest. That's your, in effect, paying rent for for, for the money, just like you pay rent for the apartment. And uh, they should not be in the game of manipulating it. They they always get it wrong. And uh, they're now engineering an unnecessary recession. Let the marketplace set the interest rate between borrower and lender. And the idea... It's so preposterous and people just accept it as normal, but it isn't. The idea that a handful of people at the Federal Reserve can guide an economy of 330 million people and 8 billion people around the world by manipulating interest rates is so preposterous and destructive, it should be laughed off the stage. But instead, we take it, oh, very seriously. (laughs) And the idea they can guide the economy is preposterous. You know, when the economy gets good, the Fed says, oh, we're we're in danger of overheating. People are getting too prosperous. Now, if you make more money, do you suddenly sweat at night and say, gosh, I'm overheating. Uh, Take take away that money. Mm -mm. I'm I'm sweating too much. It's just absolute nonsense. But again, these things are not challenged. And that's what we are trying to do in the book. 
challenge in a nice way, very readable way, jargon-free way, uh, wh- how, how, how we deal with these matters. But the Fed needs to be slapped down. It, it's per- uh, very destructive, but it's accepted by central bankers and economists everywhere. It's holy writ. So uh, given the current trajectory, where are we going to be at in a year or two? Oh, God. Well, I think uh, in the next uh, year or so, we are going to have a recession where that will be recognized even by the economic theologians. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, but I think that's going to set the stage for big changes, just as the troubles of the 1970s set the big sta- cha- uh, stage, set the stage for the big positive changes we had in the 1980s. No. And uh, so uh, uh, I think, uh, yeah, short term, hard winter, but it's going to set the stage for uh, big positive changes. And I think we will we'll be able to turn what you might call the troubled 20s into the roaring 20s. Hmm. What's in it for the politicians who are giving away the money or going down this road, which is probably not going to have a great outcome? Um, like, you know, also, we have a lot of like, if you ever hear Janet Yellen interviewed, she seems like a kooky old crazy lady who's like i uh, we no i don't we don't anticipate any i don't i don't her title is what i'm sorry steve uh, she, she she's now treasury secretary she is formerly <clears throat> chair of the federal reserve i love now they uh federal reserve says you don't have chairwoman or chair person or chairman it's the chair, the chair. So i think well why do they call her sofa or something but anyway uh, she former former chair of the federal reserve she seems like <laughs> one of your mom's kooky friends from high school and her predictions are all wrong <laughs> So that's who's running the thing? Why don't we don't have anyone better it, to put in these kind of positions? It well, maybe we should resurrect uh, that old uh, play, the, uh, the Emperor's Clothes, New Clothes. Yeah. Yeah, well, I these definitely people. want her to keep her clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you're going. <laughs> so, so, so we'll do a family-rated version. <laughs> but uh, in terms of ideas, it is the Emperor. And emperor's uh, clothes, new clothes. And uh, it is just accepted that the Fed has to guide the economy, that you can't leave people alone. Uh, And the politicians, why do they let something happen? Uh, Because they have no understanding about money or monetary policy. Uh, That's why I gave free copies away to certain members of Congress uh, as a a public service. Well, yeah. And uh, and I even signed it. But... uh, the, the the fact the fact of the matter is they don't understand it they and they think even though they will publicly denounce it they think yeah this we have to do we have to take the hard medicine we have to be brave about it but by golly we have to have that uh, root root canal and uh, operations without anesthesia yeah I, it always I think I'll maybe I'll screw the name up was it George McGovern there was a guy this is what we're kind of dealing with in. Um, L.A., we're looking for a new mayor. I'm sort of Rick Caruso because I just, anyone who ran a business, built a business, understands all the tentacles involved with Mm. subs and paying and all the, in order to build the Grove in Los Angeles, California, you just have to be good at 25 different things and you have to surround yourself with it. Then we have the sort of career politician and never had the business. And I'm like, I don't want these people making decisions that affect businesses because they've never been there. I think it was George McGovern. Yes, it was. Well, then you tell the story. Well, George McGovern, very far left liberal, ran for president, carried all of one states, uh, couldn't even carry his home state. But anyway, when he left politics after he got beat for the Senate, he left politics and thought it'd be fun <laughs> to do uh, a nice uh, bread and be- breakfast kind of place and in, I think it was in Massachusetts, and was stunned to find how hard it was <laughs> and all the hoops and regulations and licensing you have to do, all the harassment from government inspectors coming around. And he said, I had no idea it was like this. Hello. <laughs> yes. And that's my my point, which is. I want someone who's experienced this a little before they head off to Washington and make some more regulations that are going to affect the guy trying to open the uh, bed and breakfast. Steve Forbes. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. And it's a good thing that you you bring that story up because people have no idea what it goes in to making things happen. They just sort of think it just happens. No, it doesn't. 
I, I got to tell you, Obama, when he gave that speech where he's like, you in front of a bunch of poor, dumb people who cheer, you think, uh, you know, you think you built that business? You didn't build it yourself. Who built the road that you traveled on? What about those school teachers? Oh, God. It's just like it's class warfare. And of course, well, all the he, dumb he, people he start overlooked cheering. the fact yes. the reason you could build the road was because of the resources that the entrepreneurs and business people created. And going back to the beginning of this country, knowing the importance of education, townspeople would get together, pool to get, bring some money in to get a teacher so that kids can learn to be productive citizens and understand our culture, understand our history. So, uh, yeah, it did, the road didn't come first. The builders came first. A good note to go out on inflation, what it is, why it's bad, and how to fix it. Steve Forbes everyone. Thanks, Steve. Come back anytime you like. Thank you. Look forward to it. Thank you. All right. Let me hit the good ranchers holiday. Well, your waist may get a little bigger and your wallet may get a little smaller. Good ranchers wants to save you this season. And especially with all the spending that you're going to have to do with an inflation, beef prices are estimated to increase another 20% in 2023. Good Ranchers is letting you lock in your price this November, like a future. This November, when you subscribe during Black Friday savings with my code, Adam, you get their exclusive Black Friday offer of two free 12-ounce Black Angus New York strip steaks, inflation-proof your meat budget. Get 70 bucks of free USDA choice steaks and save an additional 25 on every box when you subscribe it's Good Ranchers, right, Dawson? Treat yourself or someone you love to Good Ranchers' award-winning service and quality this holiday season. Remember to visit GoodRanchers.com slash Adam or use code Adam at checkout to grab their best offer of the year. Black Angus is one of the premier breeds of cattle for high-quality beef, so don't have a normal Black Friday this year. Have a Black Angus Friday with two free steaks from Good Ranchers, American meat delivered. I'd be so into 17% flat tax. <laughs> Sounds fucking awesome. I, for all, I would love that as well. Like for all of us, what's the problem? I, I a don't bunch know. Of people trying I, to justify their jobs, but it, it's still it's always vexing me. Where it's like, yeah, but you make a lot of money. Why shouldn't you pay more? But you are paying more. You're paying seventy percent of more money. You you drive an Uber, you pay four thousand dollars. Then I pay two million dollars. Even if it's it's the same rate, it is more money. How do they tally I, that, the money? They want to know who it came from and how much they make, or is it just money? That expression is is broken. That well, you need to pay more, but you are paying more. You're paying. <laughs> no, they they fuck it up even more. They go your fair share. So if, if ten people go out to dinner, and you know Mark Garagos is across the table, and uh, Chris Maxipat is on the other side of the table. Then when you whack it up, Mark Garagos should pay $7,500 and Chris should pay 15 cents. Oh, and then God. he would wag his finger at him and tell him to pay his fair share. It's, <laughs> it's a share of what the expenses are. Right. You got cops and firemen and, you know, picking up garbage mm -hmm. at the park. Not that we do that, but I'm just saying it's, it's <laughs> a share. I, the idea that they even floated the pay your fair share is sort of insane. It was a good line. <laughs> Pay your fair share. Sure. <laughs> All right, we'll take a quick break. Back with the news right after this. Well, since we are recording this on a Wednesday, I figured we'd go over some of the big highlights from the election results, even though as we record this, many of them aren't in. And, uh, you know, one of them, the Herschel Walker, that, that shit won't happen for another month, probably. So let's just go over some of the high profile stuff. In Pennsylvania, Democratic Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman defeated Republican Dr. Mehmet Oz in a race that could uh, help the Democrats hold on to the Senate. Fetterman suffered and is still recovering from, by the way, a stroke. Um, he's replacing Republican Senator Pat Toomey, who's retiring. He got screwed a little bit in that when he did the debate with Oz, yeah. he, he started off by saying, good night. Good night. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought to myself, well, he's technically right. Yeah. Good evening. It's a lovely night. But why can't you, you could say, but if you say good night, it yeah. means you're leaving and or it's the end. But good evening, night and evening are yeah. interchangeable, but not that phrase. Yeah. No, you're right. 
Um, let's see. In uh, Georgia, the battle for the Senate seat between Republican Herschel Walker and Democrat incumbent Raphael Warnick. Too close to call, likely headed to a runoff. Um, I don't know if you saw George Takei's tweet, which i 99% sure people do that for him. It said something to the effect of, I wonder if Herschel Walker knows that a runoff is part of what you do for an election, not what he did to his children. Mm. That was pretty, pretty fucking funny. I nice. thought it was something about toting the rock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, California Governor Newsom handily reelected. Um, he doesn't even try anymore. Do we know no. who he's running against? Do we no. Know? I, I looked no. at the name and I can't remember. Bine, Bain or something. I just voted for him, yeah. whoever it was. But I, I didn't look. I can't remember. But he was. So Newsom was ahead, you know, projected to be win by 21 yeah. points or something. But he he only won by ten, I think. It's a message. Chris can look it up. But that just means there's a lot of Moranos who went to the <laughs> the voting booth and went like, "I've listened. I'd be run out of Santa Monica if anyone saw me do this." But I'm so fucking tired of this shit. I'm just gonna punch. Yeah. I'm just gonna punch whoever the Republican right. guy is. Maybe he can put an end to some of the bleeding. Like I I don't. No one knew who the guy was. He didn't spend any money. Doll, I think it was. Well, it was 42 to 57, so it was 15. That's impressive, given that none of us know his name. <clears throat> I was going to say. I didn't spend a penny. Nobody knew who he was. I, there's just enough people against. that just went for yeah. fuck it. Right. Yeah. New York Democratic Governor Kathy Hochul won re-election over Lee Zeldin. Uh, Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott beat Democratic challenger Beto O'Rourke. Um, oh, Pennsylvania. This one was interesting because Democrat uh, John Shapiro won, beating Republican um, Doug Mastriano. And the only reason his name kept coming up was because he had a lot of theories. He was a QAnon supporter and yeah. a little uh, <clears throat> little out there. Yeah, there's this thing which uh, I didn't know existed, but kind of makes sense. He was supported by the Democrats because they want a nutty person to <laughs> run against. Oh, oh sure. That's so oh, sure. They sure. dumped all their support behind the guy who they didn't think was beatable. As opposed to right. the better candidate. Right. Yes. And then some people go, you hate all the conspiracy theories and the election deniers. Why are you supporting the election denier? And it's because we want to win. It's a risky little game. <laughs> I, I think it's a sm- it's a smart game. Yeah. It's also it's a little ambiguous morally because yeah. like you you hate election deniers. Why are you supporting right. the election denier? But it's so we the can long win. Game. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Maryland uh, Democrat Westmore defeated Republican Larry Hogan. Uh, just kind of oh, Stacey Abrams was beat by Brian Kemp in Georgia. I was thinking about the. Um, the debate with uh, Dr. Oz and Fetterman, and Fetterman was a shit show. Obviously, so he's impaired. But, you know, with all the mail-in and, like, early voting, Mm -hmm. a lot of people vote before they see the debate. Sure. So I would like us to vote in person after the debate. I thought thought they scheduled the debates before uh, votes were allowed. Is that that, Am I wrong about that? You can mail in your votes (laughs) a month ahead of time, Mm -hmm. but then, then the debate was after i mean you can head you can mail them in and then they can have the debate or whatever goes on in arizona which is no debate which i i'm not down with no debate yeah you got a debate i agree uh florida ron DeSantis reelected um by the way trump has thoughts about that he is really, well, really honing he in. He didn't count on DeSantis. No, um, he uh, he. Uh, I have it in here somewhere, but um, he, he was on some flight somewhere and told, told the journalists, "Oh boy, I know things about DeSantis that even his wife doesn't know, or nobody knows it better than I, except maybe his wife. It's a bombshell." Well, the, DeSantis is all the stuff people like about Trump, minus all the baggage. bombastic, right? Although. You know, he'll be painted as a racist and a, and a whatever, misogynist, whatever. But he just doesn't have all the Stormy Daniels right. in in the right. past and the Billy Bush hot mic stuff. He's right. just kind of he took a page from Trump's playbook. He's aggressive. He's going after it. Um, Florida is just completely red now. And there's an interesting thing which uh, gives me some hope. And, and it's something I never liked. I always hated this voting base. You know, it's like blacks vote with us. Mm. You know, Biden 
said to Charlemagne the God, you, you don't vote for me, you're not black. It's like, I believe it was you ate black. You ate black. That's a racist statement, old white guy. Black people are, are allowed to vote in different different Ooh, directions. That's, that's 2022. Yeah. yeah, so so there used to be, it's like, oh, if you're black, you, we got your vote. And if you're Hispanic, we got your vote. Oh, those days are over. But not in Dade County. No. They're like, uh, we're, we're done with this shit. Well, and I think like the Cuban vote is is historically conservative, right? They're conservative. But in general, the Hispanics, at least the ones I've worked with my entire life in California, they're pretty family-oriented, mm. kind of conservative, religious, hardworking people. Like that, they're not down with whatever with whatever Beto's talking about. They they like his name. No. But they they're not just down with name. the agenda. And so the thing I like is people just voting for what whatever their morals are, whatever their standards are, whatever. Like it, like it goes, like Whitey gets to do. Yeah. We get to go, hey, you care about abortion. He cares about taxes. We're going different directions here. Not just going, this group of people always votes for us. It never works out for that group of people. And you shouldn't just count on a block because their last name or the color of their yeah. skin. I, you, I mean, Jesus Christ, my, my voter ballot was all over the road for those reasons. And I think that there wouldn't have been this big turnout. And I'm hearing this on on the news as well. But it's like, if you just left stuff like reproductive rights alone, you would have the the Republicans could have swept, but you had to throw in shit that just didn't sit right with people. Well, we're also a lot more what they haven't realized is we are more feelings based than we ever were. And you can't do things like feel uh, abortion conjures lots of feelings sure. like mm-hmm. feelings you know what i mean like more people you know versus taxes borders sure. you know stuff like uh, school boards uh, bleh, 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 you know Snooze surplus fast. tax no. thing transportation it's a blah, blah. but if you're going to get to stuff that conjures feelings and we're in the age of feelings then you're going to conjure a bunch of feelings well and that i mean states flipped over it the other day when you said that you know people don't really care about abortion it it doesn't seem like that in most and all the states that now have have pulled back on on letting women do what they got to do between them and their doctor statistically i mean i don't say they don't care about abortion economies number one usually sometimes crime number two and abortions but a lot of those states are the ones that have now taken those rights away from women it's like you're only dealing with percentages you know you don't you don't it's it's like talking about blocks you know blacks vote now less, but you know they're ninety three percent Democrat. If that ever went down to seventy one percent, they'd never win Huge. another election. Yeah. You just like shave a few a few percentage that, points. That's kind of my point. Like if you just if you just focused on the economy and you just focused on that stuff, then you'd have all these other supports. But you had to sneak in some other shit that people weren't down with. Right. I, 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 I'm with, I half agree with you. The other half is where they they get to calling everyone racist. Mm, I, I think some people would believe that. That's a Another thing that conjures. Right. Speaking of that, you watch these goddamn elections. It is, you know, black guy running against black guy, women on women fight, fighting it out, uh, black woman going against a white guy, lots of Hispanic surnames in there. Um, there's, you know, uh, Oz is Muslim, I think. Mm. Like, we don't, he, he's not one of the good ones. I oh. mean, we don't, no. Damn it. We don't, we, we, the, Turkish people, yeah, people care about diversity, but if the guy's on the right, then gotcha. fuck him. See, you know, I Candace Owens isn't a black right. woman. Right, right, right. But so you don't really hear anything about it unless you're talking to Mark Garagos because he's Turkish and Mark's pissed. <laughs> but, <laughs> but can we just call an end to this part where it's like, we need representation, right. we need a, 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 a that looks like the country. I, you turn on the election results. You're hard to, you're hard pressed to see like white dude, white dude. It's like Jewish guy, mm-hmm. white woman. You know, in New York, Zeldin's yeah. Jewish and Holcomb's uh, a, a woman, Feels and then you got the two women, yeah. Herschel Walker and uh, Raphael Warnock. I mean, it's it's pretty. Yeah. All the, I mean, w- we're down to Herschel Walker and Raphael Warnock, right? The mm-hmm. Two mm-hmm. brothers, mm-hmm. and then we got the two women in in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Going at it, and then we got we just had Fetterman and the and the Muslim guy. It's pretty pretty diverse, yeah. pretty diverse, right? Yeah, the the ring's open. Okay, 
Okay, good. There you go. Let's just um, go through some of the quick California props that uh, that you didn't Stupid vote on. Stupid school one. The um, music, music one passed. <laughs> The, uh, the prop one, we're, we're leaving the people alone with their abortions and their contraceptives. Um, prop 26 allows Native American tribes to offer sports betting did not pass, really did not pass, like 70 to 40. I don't get what. Wait, so is legalized gambling coming? Well, that's the thing. It's like, who care? Can I play FanDuel? I guess. That's why I was, I was confused I don't know. about it. I don't, Legalizing the, sports betting via agreements with Native American tribes, no, by 83%. We, we just gave $2 billion away in a Fakakta lottery. Like, what? what, are, what is it? <laughs> I, do we, do we gamble? Do we not gamble? Thank it's good. You. It's evil. It's, it's good. It's immoral. Like, it's, yeah. it's you either gamble or you don't. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the The... The arts programs passed uh, pretty handily. Ugh. California Proposition 29 regulates the staffing of kidney dialysis clinics, which I still don't understand. That did not pass. The, the bigger question is, why is there one of these centers on every corner now versus who's staffing them? Right. Like, I did anyone hear about dialysis or kidney failure? I mean, uh, diabetes? I mean, when you're, you're a rare, very growing old up, person. this is like your mom's fat friend or something had something you know but this is now just a big thing yeah. that's Apparently. a bigger that's a bigger question why is this a big thing that's a great uh question and an observation um we are upholding the law barring the states from selling those flavored tobaccos and imposes a tax to support the purchase of electric vehicles that was a no oh does it it doesn't say flavored tobacco does flavored it? flavored tobacco but it's water it says i think it's Vegetable glycerin, but yeah, tomato, tomato. Oh, but are they talking about like dip that's, you know, mm. honey, honey glazed? Deliciousness. <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> cool kids, ranch. I was going to say, my kids are going to need ranch dip yeah. when they're older that's because. Right. Wait, what? You mean ranch dip? Like with chips? No, like oh. plug. Like ranch like chaw. Red chaw. man's skull. Uh, they're going to eat chaw. New kind of ranch. They're not going to be able to sit in an office yeah. environment without the flavor of ranch right. for three hours at a time. They're going to have. You can't, you can't expect them to. No, that's unfair. They're going to have to do a little pinch between their cheek and tongue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did have you, either of you ever done that? No. When I was By in all the the dip. Yeah. No. When I was in high school and we played baseball, sometimes there'd be a little. Dipping. Didn't it make you so sick? I, I dated, I don't know if that's a word, I whatever, with a guy in high school. It was Kansas. They all did it. And I tried it, and I was so nauseous, I, I thought I needed to go to the hospital. It'll give you a light head. Yeah. You're not supposed to swallow the dip. Oh. Oh, yeah. No, but really, just having it in there, I was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. My favorite moment in life was the my dip-related story when I was... They want to show. It was me and August and Mike Lynch, I think, and we we're coming back from a show. I don't know Boston or somewhere, and and like the doors opened and the elevator on like the ninth floor, and there's two big <laughs> drunken dudes standing there, and the one guy just looked at me and he goes, "You guys got any dip?" And we said, uh, "No," and he went, "Pussies," and he walked down the hall. <laughs> I don't know what his batting average is on collecting dip from other patrons of the hey, you hotel. Gotta, you gotta be out there. I felt it was unnecessary that he punctuated with a pussy. You have zero times, times. You're going to get zero dip. That, that's yeah, true. That's but true. Uh, he definitely called us pussies for not having dip on us. Yeah, I remember a story very clearly, which is there was some dipping going on. Dip is different. There, there was the red man stuff, which is like mm. leafy mm. stuff. And then there's the sort of ground up Copenhagen kind yes. of stuff. That's the one I'm thinking. And uh, Walt Garrison, the great, well, you know Walt Garrison. <laughs> Walt Garrison, the great uh, running back for the Dallas Cowboys, used to do a commercial for Skull. Oh, and uh, so did. Uh, Campbell. Earl Campbell? Earl Campbell uh -huh. did a dip. Didn't know. They should get NFL guys to do dip commercials. I They should have got Jeez. baseball guys to do. You can't yeah. really yeah. dip with a mouthpiece no. and stuff. But Well, defense is on the field. Yeah. <laughs> they. Uh, that's true. I, we were we would dip a little in uh, in high school on the baseball team. And I'll, I'll tell you the rest of the story as soon as we see Walt Garrison dipping. 
You know, when I've got a little extra time on my hands, I like to do things I really enjoy, like roping. But there's one thing I enjoy all the time, and that's tobacco. And just like millions of other guys, I get my tobacco pleasure without lighting up. Because I use smokeless tobacco. My favorite brand is Skoll with the wintergreen taste. And just a pinch between your cheek and gum is all it takes. And boy, it sure does feel good in there. So take it from me, Walt Garrison. Do something you're really going to enjoy. Try going smokeless. All right. Yeah, I used to watch those commercials when I was a kid. Dawson, you convinced? <laughs> no, I was a Copenhagen guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we were, uh, we were on a, God, we were on a bus. Uh, the baseball team was on a bus. And we're going to play an away game, Silmar High or something. And so everyone is on the bus. And the bus was uh, just kind of parked and running. And it was like, yeah, the coaches were like, hey, get on the bus. And we sat on the bus. But the bus wasn't going anywhere. And we were just kind of sitting in the parking lot of North Hollywood High on the bus. But mm. they weren't going to let anyone get off the bus. And then so the word kind of went around, who's got some jaw? Anyone got any dip on this bus? And the answer was no. So... We were sitting on the bus, and I saw uh, Beth Ringwald go walking by or driving by or something, and I was friends with her. So I you know, yelled out the window, like, hey, Beth, get us, like, go run to the liquor store in the corner and get us some dip. Would you? Which, I, you know, I guess you could do back then. Yeah. And so, I don't know, we passed a hat, found five bucks or something, gave it to her. But it's like, hurry, because we're not, they're not going to hold the bus. We're just going <laughs> to take dip. off when we take off. And then she ran to the liquor store. <laughs> And came back with a pouch of pipe tobacco, <laughs> all right, all right. which is, I, I should have killed myself right then because I should have, someone should have tapped me on the shoulder and go, you're going to have millions of life. these interactions. This is a, <laughs> the, your, your entire adult life is going to be you explaining to something to somebody and you getting a bag of tobacco that is made for a pipe. This will be the next 40 years. But yes. high school kids are dumb. Did they do it anyway? Of course. I think we probably shoved like a little in there. You know, it's no. It's disgusting. It did not work. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nick Cannon is now expecting <clears throat> his 11th child. I'm so old fashioned because I'm like, how often can his wife get pregnant? You know, because he has, he has you know, yeah. kid craps out on in February right. and then he has another yeah. one in May and then Does he has two in June. It's and beyond like, science. Irish woman. Triplets. Yeah. yeah. And it's like he's got multiple women. Makes Put no sense. Miles well, in the woman's birth canal. He just announced that he's expecting a second kid with model Alyssa Scott. Uh, their first child, a boy named Zen, died last year after oh, he was cool. diagnosed with brain cancer. He was just months old i think oh, boy. um scott posted an intimate i'm sorry i don't know if we have it uh an intimate bathtub photo there it is of canon rubbing her belly while she's standing over him naked the caption says this is a miracle and a blessing uh the other kids <clears throat> are monroe moroccan golden powerful queen rise messiah onyx ice zion mixolydian <coughs> zillionaire and legendary love and ted <laughs> and Bruce, uh, I I don't know if you guys are like me, but the the intimate pregnant picture that feels intrusive. Well, the to me, word almost. intimate suggests that you should keep it to yourself. Yeah, that even the Demi Moore and the right. Vanity Fair, it's just say hey, you're pregnant. It's great. We get it. It's nice. It's not beautiful to everyone. It's just, but you're naked. And your boobies are bigger. But this is just a model showing off that the only part of her body that got bigger was her belly. Yeah, right. Everything else is. Right. Ready for the, for the camera. Exactly yes. where she left it. All right. Now, what if Nick Cannon approached you, Gina? <laughs> and? Well, you know, he's he doing pretty for well for himself. He wants to go for Lucky Number 12? He's hosting... Uh, uh, America's Got Talent? No, uh, The Voice? No, The Singer. Uh, the uh, Mass Singer? Mass Singer. Mass Singer. He's got lots of other irons in the fire. Sure. A lot of irons in the fire. You know, he's going to take sure. care of you, you know, for Is a while. he, though? How much could he possibly make? Uh, there, there must be contracts drawn up, right? You just cannot willy nilly oh. just impregnate, you know, nine separate women yeah. without the uh, litigation. Idea. Right? And so, uh, there's got to be, it's got to be a standard form that he's got to do. I, yeah. I don't know how he impregnates you, but I think that's part of it. I mean, well, the question is like, how much for my womb? Okay. <laughs> Is that what you're asking me? I don't even really. 
<laughs> That's the point. Well, I mean, since you bring it up, I don't really know what I'm asking, honestly. I mean, if, if everybody has a price, and yeah. I'm I'm looking for a house. That's what I'm saying. And I'd like to have more of of an option than just the two mile radius in the valley that I'm mm-hmm. currently in. Mm-hmm. So I think my husband and I would think this was a wise business decision. Well, okay, two point three seven. I agree. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let's do one more. Oh, good. Well, I've been sitting on this one. This actually could be a good way to make money, and I checked on the website. There's a TikTok user named Lisa Fettolino who says she makes well over a hundred grand a year for pooping, but not in like an OnlyFans way, in like a scientific way. So apparently, there's a site called HumanMicrobes.org, and you can go there to see if you have like the right stuff that they need to be a professional pooper at a fee of five hundred dollars per sample. Um, you have to undergo a test to verify that your stool type and physical fitness is what they're looking for and complete a video interview. Um, So I went to the website where they explain everything. Here's a clip of the first minute just to give you an idea of what's happening here. We want your poop. No, we need your poop. Let me explain. I'm with humanmicrobes.org and your poop could change someone's life. Recent research has shown that the microbiome The microbes that live in our gut and help us to digest food also play a major role in our overall health. And modifying and restoring our gut microbiome has become a major investigative avenue for treating numerous illnesses. Half of the mass of our stool is microbes. A procedure called Fecal Microbiota Transplant, or FMT for short, involves transferring these microbes from a healthy donor to a sick person. Oh, this thing. Through this Mm -hmm. process, FMTs offer a potential new treatment option for a long list of conditions, many of which may surprise you, including irritable bowel syndrome, obesity, and even mental disorders. (laughs) I don't remember that from the video. Funny, because it's true. Mental disorders! Listen, everything is going on at the gut level. Every day they find out some new information about it. Everyone is fucking themselves up, and, I, and they're allergic to everything. And they're <coughs> who do you know? I, everyone is on some sort of mylanta or tums, mm. and they're on the uh, Zyrtec and mm. this like Zantac. We're, Zantac. We're, we're, we're gobbling this <laughs> <laughs> this stuff up at yeah. record levels, and I I don't get it. Yeah. I, I I know. We're cleaning our stuff up too much, and it's affecting our flora and our fauna. We we were not meant to live in Purell. That that's that's part of the problem. But yeah, and I would also suggest, I think people are like way too fast to like. Uh, there's two things people to protect their body. One is. I, I've never been around a woman where I've cracked the cottage cheese and had a little moss or something on top of it, and I just pop it out in the sink, and then I just start eating it. And they're like, no, no, whoa, so gross. And I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So we got this weird, like, everything is so gross. Everything is, like, people look at the expiration date on, like, some yogurt or something. They go, this thing expired four days ago. I go, give it to me. Taste it. It tastes fine. Yeah. No, it's, it's look at the expiration. It's, taste it. It's fine. It's a guy you're, you'll be fine. Yeah. Like we're way too nutty about that. And then everyone has some sort of lactose intolerance. Of the, everyone has something. And I'm saying that shit is connected. I grew up like a Amish feral cat, <laughs> just living outdoors, rolling in dirt, digging and boring in the sand. And it just that was it. Just one of my greatest. Days is when we used to go to Santa Monica, <laughs> go to Santa Monica Beach, and they'd have that sewage storm drain thing that yep. would spill oh, yeah. out in the yep. ocean. You get your Water there. was ten degrees warmer because it was pissed. Because it's pissed, <laughs> and I would I would fucking spend all day in that in that swampy mess. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you not have gills? Turn yeah. on, ladies. <laughs> so funny that she's. You said that. All right, let's bring it. Uh, Stromer said to me earlier today, "You should have gills." Wow! L- like like Water World. Like wow. literally said it where you're standing huh. three hours ago. 
<laughs> All right, let's bring it home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina. That was the news with Gina Grad. All right, Tucson Rialto Theater, December fifteenth. <laughs> doing stand up there, and then off to the Improv in Tempe, December sixteenth, seventeenth. Live shows and stand up there. The whole gang's going to Tempe too. Right. Oh, the whole gang's going. All yeah. right, good. Uh, so we'll do that. And then uh, Dallas working blue with John Popper. He'll do a show. I'll do a show. We'll do a show together. We can do a little bar crawling and have a good time. That'll be January 20th through, uh, I said January 20th and 21st. And that'll be in, uh, where the hell is Dallas. that? Dallas. Yes. Is that up there? Or am I not yeah, seeing that? The first thing. Oh, Dallas. Oh, oh, I guess I'm looking for the name of the hotel. Which one is it at? The Sheridan? The, the, Sheridan, the Sheridan, and then we'll be at the Echo Theater. Ah, yeah. that's what it's I was... All, uh, all at adamcrow.com, all that info. All right, and Steve Forbes, inflation, what it is, why it's bad, and how to fix it. And until next time, this is Adam Crow for Steve Forbes and Gina and Bald saying, mahalo. Mahalo.